This Ridley O is sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. I had a perhaps unique thought the other day, which was almost immediately confirmed by a remarkable Free Talk Live call. It's probably important to game out the Edward Snowden spectacle, get a sense for where it will head. I don't have too many (laughs) unique perspectives to add to this, but there's one thing that I haven't heard very many people talking about, and that is the fact that it's likely one clear effect and probably a lasting effect will be that the national security apparatus in the United States will not draw closer together, but rather will become more divided as a result of this. This is because what they will do, the way they will react to this, likely, is an increased surveillance of their own participants. They will become more and more distrustful of the person sitting next to them, and I'm guessing this will ultimately alienate members of the of the apparatus. Like a black hole, the people closest to the center will be drawn away from those further out. The organization will stretch, maybe break. That's actually not like a black hole. It's like an object entering a black hole, I guess I should say. I don't see anything else happening. This, I mean, I don't see this happening any other way. There's no... There's no way the leaders of the National Security Agency and the other security bureaucracies will do anything but become more draconian toward their own. They will be expected to do it by their betters, by their political uppers as well. Even if there are middle or high-ranking officials who realize they better not go alienating their people, Someone above them will overrule that and make them alienate their people. Divisions inside the U.S. government will just continue to deepen. And it's yet another perfect storm, and a series of perfect storms that seems to be coming our way. Their way. Anyway, I haven't really explained much about what the call... The call to Free Talk Live came from a national security operative allegedly, someone who said he was, I think he was like a contractor or something. And he explained this process already beginning. Apparently, he was targeted. But all of what I'm saying, I could have, I would have put it all the same way even if I'd been talking to you five days before that happened. Well, two days before that happened. I didn't need to hear that call to make this prediction. We talk about the government becoming more divided against itself, but it's also probably, hopefully, constructive that the U.S. government is going to have its relations strained with Russia, China, Hong Kong, maybe Iceland. The more isolated the federal government becomes from foreign powers, the less power it will have. How many billions of dollars will they spend trying to hurt Edward Snowden and then find themselves, you know, winding up, you know, fighting Russians, uh, Chinese, hopefully not with any missiles that hit any of us. It, it reminds me of the uh, the National Review prediction that if the Soviets ever actually used their military power, you know, and invaded West Germany, they would basically just wind up fighting Czechs and Poles. It could be the same with the Feds. The deeper they go after their own people, the more they will wind up fighting unexpected enemies. And those enemies, the federal government's right about one thing, they do have a lot of them. Many are probably still in the woodwork and will come out when certain circumstances have been met. And I guess those circumstances will be met as the feds go further and further out onto their limbs. I also had a thought about uh, the personalization of these kinds of things. One of Snowden's concerns was that his revelations, the, the authorities would try to turn that into, they would personalize the story. They would make it all about Edward Snowden and whatever is not perfect about Edward Snowden so as to distract public opinion from what Edward Snowden actually revealed. We saw this happen with Julian Assange, uh, and you know the attack against Assange was relatively effective. I mean, it was more, than it, more effective than it could have been. 
but putting Julian Assange in the headlines, I, I just don't. I mean, yeah. The, so the feds, the, the benefit they get is that they personalize the issue and they make Julian Assange the word that people are keywording instead of whatever revelation. But you know, in a sense, that that just strengthens the volume of the crisis you know people when they go to youtube they want to keyword search a name you know more likely than keyword searching a concept so the name of the whistleblower or the name of the colorful leaker or hacker whatever you call julian assange those names are already the most powerful part of the story the thing that gets the word out and the feds are just reinforcing that which is already most powerful. People will Google Julian Assange because the feds came after him or because whatever else. Uh, and they're doing that with Edward Snowden, it sounds like, to an even larger extent. And, and, and better still is the fact that while the authorities are making issues out of these two people, well, they're not exactly attacking the reviled, right? I mean, Julian Assange... Uh, he, he makes the freedom movement look cool, hip, uh, hacking. He makes it look hip. Uh, he, he's, he's not ugly. Uh, it seems like every tenth woman in the world wants to do him. You know, he makes a sexy story. He's always got pretty women around him. It's really interesting stuff. It just raises the whole uh, power of the scandal, whether the scandal's him that day or the feds that day. Basically, all publicity is good publicity. Just get people talking about freedom and the rest will fall into place. Or get them talking about the enemies of the feds and that will make the enemies of the feds stronger. Snowden is the same sort of story as Assange except much less of an egomaniac apparently. And uh, you know, I, Again, I don't know exactly what constitutes sexy in a dude, but my guess is that most women would find him pretty attractive. And so again, they're not they're not making they're not personalizing some ugly fat middle aged dude, right, and making him the face of liberty. They're coming after someone who's hip and cool. That should send waves of young people into anti federal mode. It's almost better than them. Uh, you know, talking about the actual revelations or ignoring him. Bradley Manning, similar story. He he makes a very sympathetic hero to many people. Again, he he doesn't he doesn't look or come off particularly repellent. Attacking him is likely to turn many gay folks against the feds. They're doing a crappy job of picking their Goldsteins. Actually, they're not picking them at all. They're letting the Goldsteins sort of pick themselves. Liberty didn't have viral names, except for maybe Ron Paul, until recently. And it's thanks to this government demonization technique, which, like so many other government techniques, does our work for us. Hey, something else I noticed, though. Uh, and maybe, maybe this point undoes my other point or leans against it, but I, I tried searching, you know, while I was researching this to talk about it, I wanted to talk, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the, the, the revelations, which are getting a little bit ignored, uh, and in fact, when I, when I searched Edward Snowden revelations, I couldn't really find hardly any Edward Snow, Snowden revelations. It was all about Edward Snowden, all the hits that I got. Now again, these are articles that wouldn't happen, if there weren't an interesting personality and a federal attack against that personality, so this is it's it's good that that coverage is generated, but it does seem like it, you know people are talking less than I would like to see them talk about the actual revelations. I didn't even really find very many uh, looking around, but he, supposedly he's got more that he's going to release. Presumably he's given that to third parties already, so that it can be released if he is uh, if he is killed. I mean, the feds are getting so crazy now, I could see them shooting down a plane over this if they can figure out which plane he's on. I hope that whatever jet he gets on has got plenty of people who have volunteered to be his human shields. The feds would be a little bit more reluctant to shoot down 20 Icelandic businessmen or something like that than just to shoot down a few people in a, in a Learjet. I mean, look at what just happened to Michael Hastings, the journalist that broke some 
anti-military story in the U.S. His car mysteriously explodes. Thank God, I guess I saw the Huffington Post was doing a story about this. I hope that other mainstream media, not just, they're not just talking about how he's dead, but how suspicious it was. Thank God that's not being left to the conspiracy theorists. Again, it's that stretching process as, you know, somewhat pro-government media like Huffington Post is getting, they're finding themselves further and further from the center of power because the center of power is going so crazy. There's got to be a formula or a technique for accelerating this process. I really don't know exactly what it is. I only know how, the only way I know how to divide the government against itself is to just go out and do what I do and let some people in the government attack me while others defend me. Yeah, if you can go out and do that too, that'd be great. Maybe a bit of this will happen as a result of this new, I guess there's a, uh, the next wave maybe coming down the pike is the, is this thing, I guess they call it the Ob Obama overpass project or whatever. If you Google Obama overpasses, this will get you there. But I guess a bunch of people or some people are trying to get together and get, you know, many Americans on top of overpasses with signs that say impeach Obama. And I think that is really a good idea. Now, impeaching Obama may maybe not be the number one priority in the world right now, but it's a pretty good idea. And I tell you what, if, if, you, if a bunch of Americans go out there and do that, I'm sure a lot of them want to, that's going to be a bunch more Americans who are brushing up against their local police, who in many cases will come out there and mishandle the protesters. That will be, that will give them a lot of additional publicity and create a lot of new liberty lovers out of people who maybe were just Obama yesterday, or anti-Obama. It's a possible scenario. By the way, I just wanted to mention a local matter related to Edward Snowden. For those of you who maybe know the supposedly pro-liberty uh, former GOP bigwig DJ Betancourt, he used to be sort of in some sort of number two position in the New Hampshire House, I think, or maybe he was the GOP House leader. I can't remember which, but he was a former rep, um, state rep. Uh, he just posted something to his Facebook page saying, you know, hey, you libertarians and liberals out there, if you like this Edward Snowden guy so much, uh, how come he went to Red China? They're awful. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, that guy's Facebook page is pretty hard to watch sometimes. All right. I should say his Facebook feed. I never watch his page, but yeah, if this is something to ask him about if you bump into him. I think he's got plenty of uh, enemies in the Democrat Party. He doesn't need to be making enemies of us liberty folk. All right. That's all I can think of to say about this. Carry on. And by that, I mean go out and do something. This Ridley O sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. Half a million items for sale, often cheaper than Amazon the easiest way to convert your bitcoins into real world stuff. They're privacy friendly, you don't even have to give your name. Bitcoinstore.com